Uh, Dr. Pierre Gosselin has been an activist for uh, an extended period of time, decades as well, on various fronts uh, here in Quebec and abroad, and uh, as well a uh, former board member, I think, of CAPE as well, and is one of the foremost um, respected voices uh, as well as researchers on climate change in Quebec and in Canada. And uh, it is uh, my intense pleasure to have him coming and speaking to us on the role of the physician in climate change and what we can do about it. So please, welcome uh, Dr. Pierre Gosselin. Hello, merci beaucoup, Jean. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today, uh, seeing in person some, some people I've uh, talked to or emailed to in the past, including Warren. Um, we, we, I, I believe we never met before, eh? Okay. Um, there's one other way of being a physician activist, uh, and it is to work in the Quebec public health system. Uh, where you're, where you pay to do the same stuff, <laughs> which is great indeed. Um, I'll, I'll present you an, an, uh, uh, a story of what we've done last uh, 11 years, 11, 12 years in Quebec related to climate change, and it's, uh, it's been done mostly within the public health system, which allows us to be as physicians, uh, to be entrepreneurs within our hospitals or within our institutions and uh, to uh, voice our concerns publicly without being too concerned about consequences. Um, you're probably familiar by now with this cartogram which shows accumulated emissions of CO2 over the planet since, 90, uh, since the 70s, uh, where we adjust the size of the countries relative to their emissions. Um, the consequences, though, are looking a little bit different. This is, these are the deaths per year uh, accumulated over the same period as established by WHO, the World Health Organization. And most of these deaths come from hurricanes or floods, uh, people exposed to extreme uh, meteorological events. As you can see, um, Africa and Asia are mostly concerned with that. Not because they're more exposed to hurricanes or similar extreme events, but simply, actually the, the, the number of events are, is pretty similar uh, between the Americas and Europe and Africa and Asia. It is only the preparedness and the, the capacity to, uh, to evacuate and protect people and uh, uh, offer relief when, once the, the, the event has happened. And um, you, you can imagine that uh, when there's a major uh, uh, rain in, in Bangladesh and flooding and everything, uh, you cannot expect more than, you cannot expect relief, you cannot expect help, you just have to wait until it, the rain stops. And, and that is the reality. Those kind of events will happen more frequently in the future, they will be more severe, at least that's, that's what we see, we've seen in the last 20 years here in Canada and in Quebec also. Uh, there is, of course, a, a, a global warming in the sense that uh, the average uh, uh, is, is changing. This is uh, just to give you an idea uh, for Quebec. We've already experienced mostly in the last uh, 20 years uh, a warming of a little more than one degree um, uh, for, for Montreal and, um, and, and the uh, Zone going north quite quite uh, impressively. It's it's about a thousand kilometer north, and also uh, the Ottawa region. Um, a little less warming here, up to James Bay, but that's it's still in the order of one degree Celsius on on average. And here you see that the um, the colder part of Quebec, uh, the Gulf of Saint Lawrence, uh, that is being uh, cooled down by. Uh, the, the, the water coming from Greenland and Labrador. So, um, what does it mean? For, for now, it's not really perceptible at this time, but it will mean that some uh, there will be more hot days in, in the future. Uh, 
the upper part of this uh, slide shows the current situation where you've got something like uh, seven days over 30 degrees historically in Montreal and much less in the rest of the province. And in just uh, 30 years from now, uh, you'll have that kind of picture where you double the number of hot days in Montreal and Quebec becomes uh, a little similar to Montreal and down the St. Lawrence River. And when you, you put that in the uh, in a higher resolution, you see that uh, uh, those towns like Humanski, I used to work there, uh, it will move to somewhere down the Gulf in Blanc Sablon, close to Labrador. Uh, Rimouski, which is a, a six hour drive from Montreal going north, uh, will look like Montreal in just 30 years from now. And Montreal itself will be like Pittsburgh, or even worse, like Nashville. <laughs> Hopeful, hopefully, the music doesn't come with the change in climate. The other extremes, uh, the ones related to wind or rain, uh, will also increase in severity and, and frequency. And this is what we've seen uh, uh, in, in those kind of events in, in, in Canada and Quebec uh, over the last uh, 30 years or so. And as a point of comparison, these are the geological events uh, that are remaining basically the same. Um, we've had two of the most uh, severe events in, in the uh, late 90s with the Saguenay flooding and the uh, ice storm near Montreal uh, in 98, um, which were the most uh, expensive with the Red River flooding uh, in the history of, of Canada. So back in 2002, uh, we were we had been uh, really uh, made aware of what climate could do to our uh, province, and uh, we asked uh, ourselves at the institute and some other researchers what uh, impacts um, can be quantified in, in Quebec. So this was done by a team of three uh, investigators, including myself and uh, lots of colleagues uh, in and out of the institute with um, uh, funding from Health Canada, our own Minister of Health, uh, UNAS, uh, a Quebec consortium of uh, public, health, uh, public departments, uh, 10 ministries, basically, Hydro-Quebec is there, four universities, and some other uh, funding too. And uh, other studies were done s simultaneously by uh, Kozatsky, Tom uh, Kozatsky here in Montreal, and others from RGC, and uh, Mrs. Garneau from UCAM, and some of those studies in, uh, not Nunavuk, but Nunavik, uh, in, uh, which is Arctic Quebec, basically, by uh, Chris Fergal, uh, who was postdoctoral uh, uh, fellow uh, with me at that time. So basically, um, we, we did um, several studies that are on our website. We did the baseline. What, are, are we ready uh, to, uh, are we doing the right things in terms of adaptation compared to international recommendations? Uh, or a national recommendation at that time in, in water-related uh, uh, adaptation, uh, infectious disease related to, uh, to uh, animals, and, and heat, uh, the temperature, and uh, other extremes. There are, there are um, several reports available uh, on our website. General population perceptions and behavior uh, polls, we, we did that in 2005 and 2006. Uh, we did also check uh, what were the public health managers and municipal managers uh, ready to, to do, what were they doing uh, um, at that time. And we did also some uh, uh, modeling of historic mortality and simulation for future climates. 